Hey everybody, um, in this video I'll be showing you how to model a transmission line or a T-line in horn response. Uh, this is not a beginner video, so there are some tutorials you can look at if you don't know how to use horn response, but I'll try to be as simple as possible. The driver that I chose will be using an Image Dynamics um, IDQ8. It has some pretty good parameters for a T-line, so we'll be looking at that. So you want to launch horn response. For beginners, you'll just click add some things you want to model. These are your TS parameters here, you feel small. Instead of putting in these values manually, you just click this and it brings up a screen like you just put them in here. This speaker has a FS of 35. So if you're using something like that has a really low FS, your line is going to be super long. So use something that's more moderate. So 30 is, is pretty good, I think. Besides, once you damp a T line, it also lowers the resonant frequency once it goes in. So that will work well. Full position in um, horn response is this ND. You want to double click it until you see OD. OD just simply means offset driver. In terms of your radiation angle, I like using half space. This is eighth, eighth space or um, corner loaded. You can just click it onto half space there. In setting up, this is the piston area of your driver, this particular driver, which is 216 centimeters squared. The way I like to start this off is by using values that are very close to that. So you could probably just go like 220. S1 and S2 to 20. And then S2 to S3 to 20. All of these numbers are, are just segments of the horn that you're calculating. So it'll be like two segments that we're using. You don't need S3 or S4. Unless you want to do a more complicated design, like a taper design, you want to set it to parabolic, PR, PR, and we we'll don't worry too much about the values at the start. We'll be playing it around in what I think is horn response's best um, part of it, which is the loudspeaker wizard. You're gonna go to tools, loudspeaker wizard, mass chamber responses, yes, and you can see basically we have the model there of our design here, and this is where the magic happens. This section here, L1, 2, is basically the length of this segment. L1 and L2, when you're adjusting this, basically it adjusts the position of the speaker effectively along the length of the line. And this will come in very handy, as you'll see soon enough. I usually just play with this to play with the length, the total length of the line. See, as we increase this value, the length of the line also increases here. L1 and S2, again, that correlates with our values over here. And what you want to go to is, this is your schematic. You want to go to your power. And this basically shows the frequency response. So we'll take off show baseline. And we'll be increasing the length of the wavelength of the guide. Alright, I'm going to try to look for something that's fairly flat in response, that has good extension. And this is looking okay. We have extension down into the 30s. Alright, so remember the, the, val the benefits of a T-line, just like a refresher, is that you basically get a lot faster base response, like you would get in a sealed enclosure. And you also get the efficiency of a uh, vented enclosure. And whereas in a vented enclosure, the efficiency comes where the rear wave is 180 degrees out of phase. With the front wave, you have in a T line, it's only 90 degrees out of phase or quarter wavelength. So anybody looking at this frequency graph would, see, would notice this big, ugly dip that's going on right here from between about 90 hertz to 120 or something like that. And, um,. The trick that I'm going to show you is very cool, and um, this is the way that Bose actually does it. So you're going to go to your schematic, and remember I told you that L1 and L2 adjusts the speaker position along the length of the line. So as we change this value, our speaker will be moving along the length of the line, and this adjusts the frequency response that we get. So check this out. As I move this value up, 
you're basically going to see this dip disappearing. How cool is that? And we're basically eliminated that. So you have a very efficient uh, enclosure right now. Um, it goes down to your 30s. And if you look at the schematic here, it's about a third of the way down to the wavelength of the guide. So, let me show you something here. If you look at Bose's designs that they have, this is effectively the alignment that they use. Whereas the line begins here, the woofer is about a third of the wavelength, and then it tapers down. And um, this is their famous Akusama series. So I basically showed you how the secrets on how they do that. And that's basically it. How do you design a, um, a T line in horn response? Very simple, very easy. The hard part is really building it. So instead of using like formulas that you would see people using and kind of just guessing by using a quarter of the wavelength of the FS of the resonant frequency of the speaker, you can actually just model it here and see what your what your output will look like before you waste your time. So hope you guys enjoy this one and um, take care.